A Canadian Bitcoin exchange CEO just got kidnapped and held at ransom for $1 million. As Bitcoin's price continues to rise, is your safety in jeopardy as well? Let's dive into it. So a bit of context here for all of those people that think that privacy is just a LARP or that you shouldn't be concerned about privacy. I think there's a pretty good indication here that privacy is, but admittedly, it's probably not the on-chain privacy that got Dean Skirka, the president CEO at WonderFi in trouble, more so his public figure as a Bitcoiner. And it begs the question, as all of us sit on X and we post and we talk about all-time highs and we send our memes and our group chats and we're bragging to our aunts and uncles at Thanksgiving and they're bragging to all of their friends at their curling clubs, as we go through this entire charade of showing that we're Bitcoiners, are we doing ourselves a disservice in the long run? We've seen the likes in the past of Ethereum co-founder Anthony DiOrio hiring private security in like 2016, 2017, because he was so concerned that his public figure made him such an obscene target for kidnapping and ransom. So let's check out the details and then see what we can learn and how we can future-proof our safety. During Wednesday's evening rush hour, nearby downtown Toronto's busy University and Richmond intersection, a wealthy crypto CEO was allegedly snatched and stuffed into a car. I'm Dean Skirka, President and CEO at WonderFi. WonderFi is publicly traded on the Toronto Stock Exchange. A source close to the investigation says the crypto boss Dean Skirka, CEO of WonderFi, was held for a $1 million ransom. Skirka attempted to make the transfer on his mobile device but was unable to, so the source says he reached out to a family member to complete the transfer electronically. That is such a crazy series of events because I know countless people that get that duress phone call and 100% of the time, it's been a scam. My wife's grandma got a phone call as someone posing to be me stuck in like a Mexican jail and they were asking her to send Bitcoin. My parents, my friends and family, they have received phone calls from people posing to be me, posing to be someone in duress to get that phone call. It is wild that this phone call was legit coming from the actual person in trouble. It just goes to show that we have to be diligent out there and we need to warn our friends, family, our close networks of proper security protocols. After the ransom was paid, Toronto police confirm he was found quite a ways away here at Centennial Park in Etobicoke. Police say he was uninjured and the investigation into what happened continues. In a statement to CBC Toronto, Dean Skirka confirms he is safe and cooperating with police. The safety and security of all of WonderFi's employees are paramount, Skirka wrote. The company can confirm that client funds and data remain safe and were not impacted by this incident. It's crazy that as an exchange, as a platform that holds customer funds, sadly, you know, obviously he's confirming his safety and everything's all good. But the first next immediate question is, are the client funds safe? In my opinion, there is a giant risk and honeypot associated with being a publicly traded Bitcoin company CEO. But there's a larger one when you hold a billion dollars of customer funds. And I think that this is the risk, this is the prize, this is the honeypot that the kidnappers were after here. I do think that it was the custodian aspect of this that really kind of changes the tune into, are we, is this the next wave? Skirka's alleged kidnapping happened the same day WonderFi released its third quarter earnings results. The company reported a 153% increase over third quarter 2023. I catalog as many of these as I come across. And uh, to my awareness, this particular incident is the 171st uh, such physical attack. Holy smokes. 171. I'm assuming he means of like crypto related uh, kidnappings. That is insane. And I think that it goes to show that all of Bitcoin's features have ramifications. There is a dark side to being in control of your money. Now, do not get me wrong and do not hear me the wrong way. The dark side is worth it. You absolutely need to be in control of your money because the alternative is somebody else being in control of your money. And we've all seen how that plays out. We all understand by now what can happen when you are not in control of your wealth. But being in control of your wealth puts a unique and different target on your back 
that we have to be aware of and we have to plan for. Anyone who's high profile in this space, and so of course executives tend to be more public, so that, that puts them more on the radar for people. The specifics around what happened to Skirka, whether and how he was specifically targeted, remains part of the ongoing police investigation. El Salvador is a safer country now. This is an interesting take. The fact that we've had the dictator in El Salvador completely clean up the mess that is in there. I think El Salvador is literally safer than some or most major US cities. It's the safer spot to be. We've kind of been alleviated from this uh, theft instance because all of our money has been so centralized inside of a banking system that moving it um, that quickly and then that irreversibly has been very difficult. But you have to imagine back in the day when your life savings was literally sitting in your home, this is why we have guns. This is why we have safes in our houses because back in the day, uh, there, was a, there was a need, there was a need to protect yourself. Now we've kind of gotten lazy now, we've gotten away from that need to protect ourselves, and maybe it's time for us to start thinking about what are the safety practices that we can start enduring, that we can start putting in place so that if we are targeted, we have some sort of defense. Another comment here, this kind of news may be welcomed in Bangladesh, Pakistan, or India, but in a country like Canada, it's quite concerning and surprising. I don't think it's fair to paint this picture of Bangladesh or Pakistan or India um, and put Canada on some sort of pedestal. Quality of life in Canada has reduced, has been reduced so much over the last 10 years. We have a lot of desperate people. Theft is up in Canada. Crime is up in Canada. Drug use is up in Canada. Homelessness is up in Canada. All while we have asset prices rising, minimum wage you know, rising. Uh, cost of living rising. You don't necessarily have an environment that's conducive to safety. An environment conducive to, to safety is an environment where the money is hard, people can work hard, earn lots, and spend less than they earn while still getting ahead. This sound money system is the environment that is, uh, is conducive to safety. But when you have an environment like what we've had in Canada with record high inflation and money printing out of control and homelessness on the rise and drug addicts everywhere on the street, you don't necessarily get that level of safety that uh, that we you know would put Canada you know on a higher rate than a Bangladesh, a Pakistan, or an India. Personally, I think the number one source of security that you can put on your Bitcoin is a decoy wallet. A decoy wallet uses the same seed but with a different passphrase, a different twenty fifth word to your Bitcoin device. What that does is it creates kind of a, a separate, you know, call it a, it's called a decoy wallet, which gives an attacker an insight into your wallet, but doesn't give them the full access to your stack. I think most Bitcoin wallets have this function now if they support passphrase, where you can have two, effectively two wallets sitting under the same seed phrase, but with a different passphrase, a different password protecting each of those wallets. Personally, this kidnapping attack on Dean Skirka feels very entry level, feels very rookie, doesn't feel uh, well thought out, well planned. And I think that's evidenced by how quickly it happened and the amount of money that they got. But as Bitcoin sees all time highs again and again and again, as we truly look at Bitcoin as generational wealth, we have to start considering our physical security alongside our cyber security or the security of our coins on the blockchain. I definitely disagree with anyone who speaks out against internet anonymity. Even Jordan Peterson, who I look up to a lot, has been recently going, going after this. And, I just think it's fundamentally wrong, right? Privacy is the right to selectively reveal and conceal yourself. And it's a fundamental aspect of human freedom. What's the common trope against privacy? Well, if you don't have anything to hide, then why do you need privacy? The funny thing is that almost anyone that says that to you, they tend to be wearing clothes. And so you have to ask yourself, well, why are you wearing clothes? If you've got nothing to hide, why don't you just run around butt naked all the time? Clothing is like a visual manifestation of privacy. It's a human universal. We all use it, have demand for it. Even primitive cultures use clothing. And this is where the Bitcoin protocol gets the hardest knock, is that its privacy is something that is maybe not the best. You look at it compared to a Monero protocol where there's privacy baked in. You also look at the centralization of privacy uh, functions, such as the Wasabi wallet getting shut down recently. I think, personally speaking, privacy gets a bad rap and it's associated with criminals. Obviously, criminals want privacy and anonymity. However, when you think 
that your public record of wealth is, is available for everyone to see, we start to get a little bit uneasy. There's a reason we keep our pay stubs in uh, sealed envelopes or hidden in our email folders that we don't want anyone to see. There's a reason we don't print off our T4s or our tax documents at the end of the year and post them on the fridge. These are private wealth documents that, necess that don't necessarily need to be aired into the world. We don't need our friends knowing how much or how little we make or spend on certain activities. It's an old joke. You don't talk about money and politics with your new girlfriend's family. And it's for good reason, because these levels of private intellect are something that should only be shared within a deep and close circle. But I think that Bitcoin, once again, with a perfectly aligned incentive system, you are forced, you are encouraged to stay humble. You're encouraged to stay humble and stack sats. Spend less than you earn, buy Bitcoin, and keep it safe. So in the wake of this story and in the wake of this probably continuing to happen around the world, I urge you to remind yourself, I remind your friends, remind your family to take your security seriously. Don't let society, don't let the bank, the government, don't let some, some friends of yours tell you that privacy is not an important piece of your life, because it is. Ultimately, we have a right. We have a responsibility to preserve our privacy. And there are ways to do that inside of the Bitcoin protocol. And I recommend that you research those, I recommend that you look into those, and I recommend that you take it seriously. Because the best time to start privacy-focused initiatives is today. Because when you need it, it's going to be too late. Much like any tool, much like any tool that combats any force that tries to steal from you, when you need it, it will be too late. So that's where we're gonna end today. A little bit of a somber note. Obviously, our best wishes to Dean. Um, I'm happy to hear he's doing well. I hope and I pray that you watching this right now will take this, will understand that we are literally in a transfer of wealth from the state to individuals. That will not happen as peacefully as we want it to. That will not happen in a smooth transitionary period. We are undergoing one of the largest transfers of wealth in history. Moreover, we are undergoing the largest transfer of control in history. Don't take that lightly. Understand what it means for you and your family. This is an exciting thing. This is a good thing for the long term. But you are going to have to live through the bumps and the bruises to get there. Stay safe, my friends, and stay sovereign.